and a great Saturday to you all in the 94.7 FM listening land. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> we are yes, back in the chat room on Dr. the Doctor, and we are so glad that you are here with us. Happy New Year, everybody. Man, yeah. 2023. It doesn't even sound right, does it? It doesn't even sound right. Like, especially... I think especially if I were your age, it wouldn't sound right. Because I can remember at that age, like every time a year changed, it just seemed yes. you know, like, but I don't know. It doesn't feel, it feels kind of weird in, in one regard, but then in others, it's not, not so much. Uh -huh. um, it's just that the year flew by. Every and day. when I think about some of the things that I've been working on, uh, and I'm telling myself, okay, I got until I'll just say February to do this and maybe something would work or uh -huh. maybe something personal. And I'm like, you know, whatever this February stuff is, it's going to be here in a minute. Yeah. A couple of things in May. I'm like, before I turn around, it's here. Yep. You know, next thing you know, we're in the summer and I, I don't know what happens with time, but it's crazy. Like it gets to a point where it seems like it slows down a little bit and it doesn't because if it were going as quickly as it starts, mm -hmm. we'd be at Christmas again before you turned around. Right, right. And I, I remember my dad saying something to me when I was really young. I think I might have been going into college. So I was probably 18 and he said to me, you know, at this point in your life, things are going to start to fly by. And mm -hmm. I didn't think he knew. I mean, I don't know why I didn't think he knew what he was talking about. He's always right about everything else, but I didn't believe him. Mm -hmm. But something about getting older every year makes makes me feel like time just flies. Like yeah. I just wanted to slow down. Yeah. Um, and I Especially think when you're raising your kids and you see them growing up so quick. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and that's probably why people say, be present, be in the moment mm -hmm. because you can't stop time from going, but you mm -hmm. can experience time as it goes by. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I need to be, I need to remind myself of that constantly because it, it just goes by too fast. This, yeah. this, and with this, that this, said, yeah. you know, I really want us to talk a little bit about, and we've talked about this before about mindfulness. Yeah. And, you know, about setting goals and about all of these new year's resolutions that people have. And I, and I hate to say it, I hate to sound the way that I sound, but like, <laughs> I just want people to be realistic and don't be so hard on yourselves because people are already struggling. Yeah. And, you know, and I don't want people to put too much on their plates mm -hmm. and start mm -hmm. feeling overwhelmed or start feeling like they're failing right. in some way or the other. Right. Um, but before we, we move forward, I, I guess one of the things that I'll say is, um, so we got this these new variants of COVID and the weather is cold and they're saying like, you know, the new variants uh, symptoms don't look like the old symptoms. Goodness. Now you might, instead of sore throat and uh, the cough and all of that, now you might have aches, like aching legs. Uh -huh. yeah, something like that. Oh, so, God. Um, you know, just, just be careful guys, because we've got a lot of stuff in the air. I mean, yeah. I'm still, I've been asked by people, which I think is kind of bold. Like, why are you wearing that mask? I'm wearing mean, it because I want to. Right. <laughs> but I've noticed I've been a lot healthier. Yeah. Uh, in terms of my allergies and, uh -huh. and all of that. So I try to keep it on. And another thing I noticed is like in the cold air and I'm not breathing in all that cold mm -hmm. air. I have mm -hmm. so kind of stick with my mask yeah okay. yeah so I mean it's up to you guys what you want to do but I just say you know play it safe right and whatever that looks like for everybody well I was really shocked over the holidays when you know Jackson and I were were traveling and I was really shocked at the number of people that did not have on a mask in mm -hmm. the airport right and oh. on the airplane mm -hmm. uh, I mean if you think about the number of people that you're com coming in contact with in the airport, um, you know, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It, it just felt like if, if you don't wear it anywhere else, the right, airport yeah. and the airplane. Yes. And then on those airplanes, oh God, that air right. just you recycle. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I've been having to travel a lot for work and I've had that mask on. Yeah. Um. So, 
I, I, you know, before we move too, too far into the show, let's kind of talk about the elephant in the room, which yeah. to me is DeMar Hamlin. I mean, to see that game this past week mm -hmm. um, and just all of the things around it, right? Um, some of the things that are that were said, because we, you know, we're in this sensitive, sensitized world where you can't say, um, you, you can't say a whole lot without uh -huh. kind of getting in the hot seat. Yeah, you have to be really careful. I say, hey, before you tweet it read it and read it and then read it again. Right. Maybe send it to somebody and say, hey, is this yeah, okay? Yeah, it's kind of like how I do with emails because sometimes, you know, when you're dealing with those certain kind of folks in the workplace, it's like, hey, yeah. maybe, you know, maybe my tone might come across a certain way or whatever. Uh -huh. Um, I think what really stood out to me about the hot seat for Skip Bayless was Mm -hmm. when he and Shannon Sharp kind of had words again, you know, a couple, few days back. Yes. And Shannon Sharp said, you know, he was trying to say he didn't really want to talk about the tweet. He was just, you know, uh -huh. and, you know, he said, you know, I thought, you know, I was hoping he'd take it down. He's like, no, because nobody here had a problem with the tweet. And he's like, well, clearly they did. Right. They Somebody said something. And he's like, oh, no. And I mm -hmm. stand on that tweet. And I was like, Yep. Okay. Well, maybe not a good idea to stand on the tweet, even even if because I think I think it depends on who reads it. Uh -huh. Like I don't care for I shouldn't say that on air, but like he's not one of my favorite people. But yeah. Um. Even with that said, when I read the tweet, I did not get exactly what other people got, but uh -huh. I certainly because I mean at the end he kind of. And I didn't consider him cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. I just considered him as a as a sportscaster telling the raw facts. Uh huh. Right. They're talking about what you know this game. Like you know, are they going to reschedule this game? And basically, wh what else are you going to do? Like you know. Right. And then he says, you know, but this incident is is dire, and it's. You know what I mean? He kind of, and so a lot of people were like, he tried to clean it up at the end. No, I just think he, I, don't, I mean, he, I certainly don't think he tried to clean it up after what he said to Shannon Sharp. Right. I mean, he <laughs> kind of doubled down on it. Yeah. Um, And I think that's, that's the issue for me. I think sometimes when people feel backed into a corner or they feel you know, everybody jumped on them or attacked them. I think sometimes instead of thinking about, well, what, what, what did I say that could have been offensive or, you know, how could this have offended somebody? I think sometimes people feel so attacked that they just stand in that corner and, and they just, you know, instead of saying maybe I was wrong, I got a thing when people can't can't um, be accountable yeah. for. I mean, because sometimes maybe make sometimes it's not all about whether it's right or wrong; it's how it impacts people. That's right. Yes, yes. So, and I and mean, so why not just say if I not my intention and oh. I'm, you know. But I mean, there was already heat, I mean, and I won't. I don't want to get into that because what Shannon Sharp said in this last ordeal between them was the most. What's most important is Demar Hamlin, yeah. right? And so that podcast that we were listening to, where the mm -hmm. guy really breaks it down and talks about how Demar Hamlin is not even vested in the in the NFL, uh -huh. and he's only been there like two years, right? Yep. Uh, he he gets one hundred and sixty thousand dollars bonus. Mm -hmm. He gets uh eight hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't be vested for like three or four years in the right. NFL. Right. And what if what he has is something ongoing, right? Something ex that requires extensive care, yes. and yes. the NFL is not required. Mm -hmm. 
to pay. I think they can, it sounds like from what they're saying, they can make a decision that mm -hmm. they will, but, but they're not obligated to. They're to not do. obligated to do that. And I thought about, you know, uh, how many times, and it's not just black, our black boys, you know, mm -hmm. or girls that uh, depend on athleticism yeah. to make a living. It's a lot of people. I mean, there are blacks and whites and Hispanic, all, you know, mm -hmm. in these professional sports. And, you know, that one thing could happen. That one yeah. moment could yeah. ruin their careers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the biggest part of it for me was thinking about, you know, we talk about trauma all the time. And for me, it was traumatic to watch. I, you couldn't even see this young man ha having CPR done. But when they said those three letters, like I, I was stunned. I, I, I didn't expect that them to say that. I just thought, you know, maybe he had, I, at first glance, I was like, well, maybe he had a cramp in his leg or something. You know, I had no idea that that young man was not conscious when he collapsed and I've heard so many people say like it was just hard to watch the players reactions um because they didn't expect it either but the way the the I mean that you just you just saw on their faces and I think it was you that posted about Higgins you know like what about him because uh -huh. you know he's devastated oh gosh yes yeah, you know he's devastated because that was not an intent like that was not anything that he he would have ever thought right would have happened and all of the pros are saying the former pros mm -hmm. are saying that was just a routine play yep yep yeah and so that I think is what's scary about it is like if that's a routine play and that could happen, you you can be on the ground unconscious from a routine play. And, and someone also mentioned, you know, if if the if the Bills had to go back into that stadium and play again, how traumatic, how how you know fearful they would be mm -hmm. to be back in the same arena where where their you know uh, friend and teammate um, almost mm -hmm. died. It's like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it I just, thought that was pretty cool. They said when he woke up, he, you know, the first thing he wrote was, you know, did we win? Right, right. You, know, you had a fight with life and you won. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, just absolute prayers and 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 uh I saw someone actually pray on ESPN the other Me day. Too. That was that was like chills. Yes. I got. He said, yep. I'm gonna do it right now, right now, out loud. <laughs> Yep, I thought that was amazing, yeah. really amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, you know, my nephew was watching and and Jackson was watching, and I re I heard that my nephew said, you know, like what what happened? Why did he fall like that? He was, you know, really really um, impacted by it, and I don't know how you explain that to to kids because our adult minds can't even really get it. We can't grasp it either. Yeah, I agree. Just tough, but I'm sure I, I'm praying and and hoping that he pulls through and continues to improve. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, you know, and and then, you know, you've been asking questions or making comments about, you know, Jackson wanting to play and oh yeah, mm -mm. no, nope. you know. <laughs> Harlan, he absolutely like I'm a you know I'm diehard Cowboys and uh -huh, uh -huh. so is Harlan probably just because of me right uh -huh. and uh man I, yeah. I just like please let's not do that nope and and my dad has already said you know I know I'm not the parent but I'm gonna tell you like this my grandson's not playing football <laughs> I mean, he said that even before any of this happened it, and as I much have as I love football. My grandkids are playing. <laughs> not gonna do it. That's um, where I, I am too, Dad. <laughs> I was always a, a hard no too. But if there was even a consideration uh -huh. down the line for it, this this um this thing that happened um with Mr. Hamlin has has sealed the deal for for Jackson. There there will be no tackle no football. For no. Mm -mm. No. Well, you know. 
I, I mean, I have to agree. I mean, even even before this happening, mm-hmm. um, you know, I mean, hey, my son does MMA fighting. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, the head trauma. Yes. Um, and all of that. Like, why are we doing this? I mean, I don't know why people choose to do mm-hmm. you know <laughs> what they do. Like, I wouldn't even want to be hit. <laughs> right. But yeah. um, you know, before that it was rugby. Mm-hmm um with him and I have just almost begged like just please stop because you know I've been to a couple of fights you know I can't watch I just waste right. my time. yeah <laughs> right and I, I can't, can't imagine I that can mention if somebody gets the best of him I want to go help right <laughs> at least beat the person up that did something to him <laughs> yeah I cannot imagine as a mom watching your son or daughter play yeah. such a physical um sport. Sport. Mm-hmm. yeah oh gosh that's that's got to be tough so you know here's so with that said i've been wondering i wonder what's going to happen in the football world sure surely there are probably now going to be some new rules and regulations and stuff you know yeah uh, I mean, so much has he has he it's evolved over time anyway. Like what yeah. could happen years ago can't happen now. Right. Um, and so, you know, if we get to the point where we can't have body contact, then what does the sport even look like? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And quite honestly, I know that there are probably a, a lot of people out there who will be really upset. If because people are already upset about some of the rules changing, well, that's not football mm-hmm. anymore. But I think what what the biggest lesson that that we hopefully learned the other day is this this sport is you know for everybody's entertainment, but life and death is so much more important than the game. And this sport puts people's yes. lives on the line. Every single minute of every single game. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we've got more to talk about. It's a new year. Yes. Um, you know, I saw that there are some new legislative laws that uh, took effect January 1, mm-hmm. 2023. Want to talk about some of those and what to what to expect with those and and then maybe we can talk a little bit about um, how to approach mm-hmm. the new year. And we can do that when we come back from break. I tell you, these breaks come up like they do. I'm, I always feel like we've been talking about five minutes and mm-hmm. then I you start giving me that look like it's time. <laughs> so it's time, folks. We will be right back on Doctor to Doctor in the chat room on 94.7 FM in just a moment. We are still here on Dr. the Doctor in the chat room, 94.7 FM. Happy New Year again to all of you. Uh, So when the clock struck um, midnight on January 1, more than a dozen laws went into effect. Laws related to uh, medical records, subscription service cancellations, early retirement for emergency communications personnel, Uh, Mail order pharmaceuticals are among some of the new laws that will be enforced starting in 2023. Mm -hmm. One of the most notable, notable laws that took effect in January is the Dallas law. And this information comes from WKRN in Nashville is uh, where this was posted. Uh, the Dallas law named for Dallas DJ Barrett, who died after a fight with security guards at Dirk's Bentley's Whiskey Row on August 16th in 2021. The law revises the required training necessary for someone working as a security guard, uh, adding de-escalation techniques, safe restraint techniques, and emergency first aid uh, and CPR training. 
Prior to the law's passage, those hired as a security guard uh, by a proprietary security organization were exempt from those certain training requirements. Now all those hired as security guards in Tennessee will be required to show proof of that training. DJ's autopsy revealed that he died of uh, asphyxiation, deeming the manner of death as a homicide. Wow. Seven yeah. people, including six whiskey roast security guards, were indicted last December on reckless homicide and aggravated assault charges in connection with DJ's death. Additionally, four of the guards were not properly licensed mm, at the time of the incident, according to the uh, court documents. Um, and that kind of reminds me of the... Um, George Floyd. Yes. You know, yes. I'm thinking about like all these people just, you know, like what's up with that? Like why? I mean, it's so easy for people, you know, like, you know, you could have people in certain positions where they, they're not getting enough air. Uh-huh. They could even be still talking to you. Uh-huh. But not getting ad adequate oxygen you know oxygenated that blood oxygenated blood flow mm -hmm. right and die yeah easily yeah that's what I thought about when I read that George Floyd instantly came to my mind because you know people are when people aren't trained in how to restrain someone, you can very easily injure that person. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I mean, I, I think back to um, the, even the days when I was working in a residential facility, everybody had to be trained in how to properly restrain somebody. Because if you weren't and you um, did something the wrong way, you, you could potentially, you know, uh, paralyze someone you could potentially yeah, yeah. strangle them um and so i i'm i'm pro this change mm -hmm. uh, because i'm sure countless number of people have been injured and or are no longer with us because someone did something that they were not properly trained to do and even the de-escalation techniques right yeah. that's training because you know maybe you won't have to use restraint right if you can de-escalate. Right. You know, yeah. and, and with that said, I, I really like to share this story. So um, in Memphis, as you know, there have been a lot of issues with the, would, it, would that be the clerk's office, county clerk's office, getting your tags and all that? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And so I always, always is a strong word, but like, probably only a couple of times that I actually went to the office and got my uh -huh. time. Like uh -huh. I'm just about always, always going to um, order them online. And there yeah. was a time when if I ordered them before, like if I ordered them in the morning on a weekday mm -hmm. in two business days, I would have them. Okay. Have my sticker in the mail. Mm -hmm. But of course this time we're actually getting the new tags Right. To, you know, I had to get the whole thing. So, right. um, so it took mine a while, had some friends, you know, everybody, you know, how we do like, did you get yours? When did you order uh -huh. yours? And I had some friends that got theirs like almost immediately, like within like three or four days. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, so mine should definitely be here on time because it was December 31st that they were going to ex expire. And they, they did come, um, but I had not put them on. Uh huh. One of the other unspoken rules and unwritten rules mm -hmm. is that, <laughs> you know, they give you about a week, even if they do say expired. Nobody's uh -huh. going to talk to you, but mine expired December 31st. And on New Year's Day, I was stopped. Wow. And it was a really horrible experience. Mm hmm you know, that I had. And I kept thinking to myself, you know, I'm not doing anything. I'm not, yeah, I'm I'm not, no pushback whatsoever. Like, mm -hmm. what if I was one of those people that did 
mm-hmm. have that kind of attitude or whatever. This could really, uh huh. Tr- and I mean, and they took me through the ringer. I won't mm-hmm. even go into. They took me through the ringer, and then came back because they could. You know, one of the questions that was asked of me was, I said I have. So I just said I showed them my email. Uh-huh. My plans had been ordered. So they saw, they didn't see that they had been delivered, but they saw that they had been ordered. Right. They came back to the car and asked me for my registration. I said, wouldn't that be with my tags? Mm-hmm. Do, you know he, do you know he said no? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I said, okay, so you want the expired one? <laughs> wow. Said, Ma'am, that'll be fine. I gave it to him. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Okay, I you know somebody else would have been like, uh huh, yeah. <laughs> Larry Campbell would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, oh God. I'm, so, like, I'm glad you kept you know kept your composure, kept you cool. So cause... my car was kind of out in the street the way they had me to pull over, and so um they had my license and everything so I pulled up a little bit and they blew the horn and I turned and looked and he's like doing his finger like no oh and I said oh I'm I'm moving my car he did no again now hmm. on that when I moved my car anyway because I was sticking out in the street uh-huh and he laid on that horn and I was like well you'll stop as soon as I get my car out I wow was, yeah oh my goodness and you know what else? He walked up to my car. It was two of them. He mm-hmm. walked up to my car and said, hi, I'm officer such and such. Mm-hmm. Why don't we ever remember those names? Because we're panicking probably. But I really wasn't because I knew I had my you were tags. Okay. Uh-huh. Like I knew I could show proof of my tags. I think because, you know, we talked about same thing happened <laughs> To me and the tag was sitting on my front seat because I'm in, I'm just anyway. But I do um, agree, trauma. Yeah. Related to these relationships mm-hmm. or not so good relationships. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Even if one is behind me, I immediately tense up mm-hmm. until they're no longer behind me. It, you know, they need to make a left, make a right, something. But as long as you are behind me, I'm I'm worried. So, so, so here is, um, here's another bill that's going into effect, uh, starting the beginning of this year, HB 1195 slash public chapter 664. It requires a health insurance entity, a health service provider, or a healthcare facility to notify a patient of a, of communication among the entity, a health service provider, and a healthcare facility concerning the patient's medical claim. It requires a utilization review agent to notify the provider or healthcare facility, as well as the enrollee when additional information is needed for a prior authorization request. And I think that's gonna be a lot of extra work. So per the new law, that communication must be given to the enrollee within two business days after that communication has occurred and must include a summary of Mm -hmm. the said communication. See, for me, that that's interesting because people already have to go through, Mm -hmm. jump Mm -hmm. through, go through Mm -hmm. all this red tape. People already don't understand what their insurance benefits even mean or what they are, you know? (laughs) And so I, I don't know whether this is good or bad. I mean, it it seems like it's better for the consumer, mm-hmm. uh, but I just wonder what that, you know, it, practically it seems better for the consumer, but mm-hmm. um, realistically, I don't know whether it will end up to, to be that way or not. Um, I don't know if it's going to be more. I just know I, I'm grateful for my insurance. Like I have, you know, great insurance and mm-hmm. I, I just know a lot of things you know, with certain health issues or whatever and things or tests or things that I've had to have in the past. And I always look to uh, have to pay extra or whatever. And it seems lately, I, you know, I go in and they're like, oh, no, you're good. And I keep and I keep waiting on a bill 
Uh huh. You know, and it never comes. I'm like, okay, it was really covered. You know, right? Maybe I really was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. My insurance is not the greatest, um, mm. and I have. Uh, we're starting over now, January one, with those same um, high deductibles. I have one of those plans, and it just is not any fun trying to navigate insurance mm -hmm. and. I Maybe just I can't stand when I have to do it, but mm -hmm. hopefully this helps the the consumer as it's intended to do. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, other new laws that are in in effect as as of January one is HB one six five two, public chapter eight zero three. Now this one requires a business that allows someone to sign up for a service or a subscription online to provide the option to cancel that service or subscription without additional steps. Woohoo! Right? Right? <laughs> it also creates certain exceptions to the rule including the FDIC insured banks, um insured credit unions, local government services, state regulated public utilities, the FCC or the FERC or businesses licensed by the Tennessee Department of Commerce and Insurance. Um, this is great because mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I have gone to cancel something oh. and you have to, again, jumping through hoops and all the red tape, yes. and ask this question, are you sure you want to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, why? Why? why was it too expensive? Was it too, look, right. I night. just want to be gone. Yeah. <laughs> Let me loan. Let me loan. Oh, like so one. HB 2416 Public Chapter 1001 enacts the Tennessee Abortion Inducing Drug Risk Protocol Act. This bill requires any abortion inducing drug to be provided only by a doctor in a medical facility and cannot be provided through the mail. The law also requires that physician that physician to set up a follow-up appointment around seven to 14 days after administration of the drug to confirm the pregnancy is completely terminated, as well as to assess the degree of bleeding. The criminal penalty for violating this law will be a class E felony and carries wow. a fine up to $50,000. Wow. There are also civil penalties for violations of the law, including malpractice action for the actual um, and punitive damages, professional discipline for the doctor, including license suspension and uh, revocation, wrongful death action background, injunction wow. relief against the doctor from doing it again. There is no liability for the patient per the law, only the doctor. Wow. Now I'm glad that they're making it that a doctor has to do it. Like yes. cuz yes. you know with with the with the Roe versus Wade thing, mm -hmm. right? I don't you know, I don't want people going to these back alley. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so yeah. it's not saying it's just saying it has to be done by a doctor. Right. It has to be safe. Mhm. Mm yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Nothing wrong with that. I I don't I don't think um i think that again is supposed to be pro a protective measure mm -hmm. which we need mm -hmm. um i'll go ahead with the next one hb 2597 or the public chapter 996 this one authorizes an assessor property to display unlisted for the first and last name in the ownership field of an online searchable database of property when certain conditions are met. Those conditions include the property owner files a written request with the property assessor to have their name put as unlisted. And the written request contains information identifying the property in question as the primary residence of the property owner. The law does not exempt the records from open record laws. So um, is that to do with um the racial um the racist stuff that is going on with people listing their properties and you know I don't know what the there's 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 a phrase for it where you know you're asked to like take down like pictures um like what what is this related to I wonder we you know you mentioned earlier we needed to get uh 
have your dad on here to yeah. explain some of these. And I mm -hmm. wonder, this will probably be a good one for, for him to help the us. That they're saying is, it's, it's as it would be listed as unlisted and there would be no names. Because, you know, in this day and age, all you need is a name. And you can right. find out who people are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, HB 2683, public chapter 819. Um, makes emergency communication personnel eligible for early service retirement when the employing entity has elected to offer this benefit. Requires the employing entity to be responsible for 100% of any increased cost necessary to provide this benefit to the emergency communications personnel. The law applies to an emergency communication worker, public safety dispatcher, emergency communications telecommunicator or emergency call taker. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm happy about is that, you know, sometimes I, I always wonder, or we always wonder um, how much work people in, you know, Congress or just in the government, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what kind of work are they doing for us? Are they, you know, actually thinking about the, you know, the people that they are elected to, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to care about. And, and so in reading some of these, I'm like, okay, you know, some of these are actually seem like good, good ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about more when we come back from break. We'll be right back on 94.7 FM. We are back. I'm so glad that y'all are sticking around with us. We are, you know, talking a little bit about the new year, some of the new um, laws that have been enacted um, as of January 1st. So we were going over a couple of them. Um, actually, we, we talked about quite a few of them and um, just were commenting on how happy we were i guess that they are they seem to be laws that are are designed to help the mm -hmm. us as the consumers mm -hmm. um so let's see here let's do uh sb2295 public chapter 1112 so this law makes various changes to the qualifications for certifications as a medication aid by the board of nursing it change, the changes include stipulating prior experience in certain care facilities, um, must be at least one continuous year or more. Um, certain training requirements can now be completed via distance or virtual learning. Mm -hmm. And the passing grade requires, um, passing grade required of standard examinations is now lowered from 85 to 75%. Oh. Yeah. So changes let me see if i this one i'm not quite sure how me i feel either. About it. <laughs> me either when they say that <laughs> they lowered it and i think it's just so hard to find people that you don't want to work yes yes Girl, but good lord have mercy Whew. yeah um now i don't know <laughs> this one's hard for me because i think about you know, el elderly people that might have like a, a nursing a aid or someone that kind of helps them through throughout the day. Um, and, you know, I don't, I, I'm not sure <laughs> how I feel about that one. Um, you know, I, 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 I know think when I was in nursing school, I wish that score had been 75. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> I, I, I get it. Um, so and yeah, I will say this, everybody that can pass a test is not necessarily good at the job right. and right. vice versa, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I that's a good that. mm -hmm. Some people just don't test well, but they are, that's you know, really good at what they do. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a great I knew point. people in education that just really struggle with passing the test, right? To be certified as a teacher but they were just one heck of a teacher. They, as in several people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were really good teachers. 
innovative and creative, but you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But just unfortunately couldn't pass the test. Yeah. I, I, you know, I have um I, my thoughts about those tests are some of them, like the GREs and mm-hmm. the SATs, mm-hmm. I feel like they do test your ability to take a test and not necessarily test your ability or, or your Perfectly. knowledge about, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, so some some schools even I've heard recently have been, you know, doing away with those tests, maybe because of that reason. Mm-hmm. Um, just what you said, people, just because you can't pass a test doesn't mean you don't know mm-hmm. your stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think we skipped one. So SB0905, Public Chapter 1104, it revises provisions governing the sales and use tax exemption for qualified farmers and nurserymen in regard to certain farm equipment and machinery used in agriculture operations. The law exempts farmers from sales tax on items and services used for agriculture production, including building materials, repair services, and labor. Now that might be a good one because we we need produce and mm-hmm. all, all the stuff that the farmers do. Like we need to make life easy for them, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with, you know, just the, the rise in food prices and, you know, we, we just, I don't know. It scares me. I think we talked about this before when you said that almost every time you had walked into a grocery store, the the, the stocks or the shelves were unstocked mm-hmm. and, and just empty. And so, you know, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but like you said, if we, the easier we can make it for the people who are literally feeding us, um, probably the better. Um, let's move on to our next, um, law change here. And that is SB 2398, public chapter 785. Now this one outlines a relative, uh, caregiver program for foster care. It authorizes the department to implement an extension of the foster care program to provide services to youth transitioning from state custody to adulthood, which is really amazing. Um, This bill reimburses eligible relatives of foster youth to support the cost of raising a child. It also expands eligibility to uh, ages 18 to 21 for foster youth transitioning from state custody to adulthood to access services, according to the Tennessee Senate Republican Caucus Deputy Press Secretary Zachary Clark. Mm -hmm. I think this is amazing. I can't tell you the number of kids that I have watched age out of the system Mm -hmm. um, when they turn 18 and all of a sudden because they are 18 they're supposed to know what they're doing when they had nobody really most of the time to teach them what to do as an adult they've gone from foster home to foster home to foster home Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden because they're 18 we just we just drop them we just wipe our hands clean and um, so I really love this um, this change because it gives them a few extra years to to play catch up okay. um, and to not be considered, I mean, they'll still be considered an adult, mm-hmm. but it sounds like they can continue to get services until they are 21 years of age, which is, is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I agree. Because um, also I, in just working with families, Mm -hmm. to have you know those older kids because that's still you know what I'm saying that and you're trying to um take that wraparound holistic approach yeah but you know you you know how many times we've heard families say but they're 18 now Uh uh-huh they're turning 18 in a couple of months so it's nothing we're going to be you know what I mean so this kind of expands that and I I, I agree good good deal um I think we're at SB 2694, is that right? We are. Uh, Public Chapter 1040. This bill revises provisions governing professional counselors. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Here you go. (laughs) Starting January 1 of 2023, professional counselors 
will be required to have completed coursework specifically related to the diagnosis, treatment, appraisal, and assessment of mental disorders, as well as completed two years of postgraduate supervised experience. The previous law specified counselors needed at least nine graduate semester hours and two years of postmaster supervised experience. Additionally, if someone is granted a temporary license, that license will now be valid up to four years and be eligible for extension. The 113th General Assembly will convene in um, on the 10th of hmm. this month. So. Okay. Representative Shaw is going to be back in there. In yeah. A few days. Um, so you think this law may have all to do with the uptick in mental? Yeah. Okay. I do. And, and I, you know, appreciate the required continuing ed or the required improving of mm -hmm. oneself because there is so much happening um, with, with all of us. Yeah. And and just everything that everybody's dealing with in terms of depression and anxiety. And it's not mm -hmm. just kids, it's it's adult, it's all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do appreciate that, you know, people are starting to pay attention to and make mental health a priority. Mm -hmm. um, now, if we can just get you know, some additional compensation for what we do, that would be amazing too. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, mm -hmm. we got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I said, I will always say this. I will always, always say, and that's what we have to do for our teachers too. Yes. Um, I mean, I saw a little clip of a, of a Chicago, Illinois classroom and what a teacher was going through and and I just thought to myself what in the world like would I do if I had to be that teacher in that classroom uh-huh you know? um but anyway you know now that we've gotten caught up on the you know some of the new things that we can expect in terms of the laws and the bills that have been passed mm -hmm. um maybe we should talk a little bit about how we should approach you know, this new year thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, I hear people talk about vision boards all, all the time, uh -huh. you know, uh, and, and how they help us to enforce our vision and support um, that visualization practice. It's kind of like, mm -hmm. a, I see it, I can achieve it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can, you know, have a handmade vision board, you can do it electronically, but it's just kind of something that you keep in the forefront. And, you know, I've never, I write all the time. I journal all the time, but I've never done a vision board. Yeah. And I'd like to do one. Wouldn't you like to do one with me? I would. I would. Okay. So I'd like to do that. Uh, number one, to, so we can kind of get clear on our goals. That's the first yeah. thing. Uh-huh. Right? Okay. Um, a vision board is help, a helpful too that can help you get clear on what your goals are and what you want to achieve in your life. Uh, it can help you bring awareness to what matters the most. So you focus on the right things when you're working towards your goals. Makes mm -hmm. all the sense in the world to me, you know. Uh, I want to put mine right there in that by that mirror so I can see them every day. Every day. Right. Because what's that saying? Out of sight, out of mind. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love that idea of getting clear on your goals. Mm -hmm. um, I I think what what visions vision boards do in helping you get clear on your goals is you know sometimes we have all of these ideas about like I want to do all of these things and sometimes I I think our perception of success is I'm only successful if I do all of these things or mm -hmm. if I do these things really big mm -hmm. and I think doing a vision board can help you maybe narrow the focus or break it down a little bit. That's uh, interesting because I asked somebody not long ago, like, what is, it may have been Ronnie. I said, so what, what define what success is to you? Mm -hmm. Because most of the time people think it's things and uh -huh. degrees and, mm -hmm. you know, and I say not necessarily so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So let's talk a little bit more. So how do they help you grow? They, they, you know, can be updated as many times as you'd like, because our goals often change. We can, you know, update them once we achieve a goal. Maybe like if you can mark one off, maybe you can set another goal, right? Yeah. Uh, it can also be a great place to look at where you come from. And that's what I mean by success and what you've already achieved. It yeah. remind you of your growth along your journey. Yes, yes. I love that. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, you mentioned um, journaling earlier. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to, to gauge your success because you can go back and read from six months ago, a year ago, five, mm -hmm. five you know, years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And really kind of, it documents where you were and where you are. Um, and sometimes we need that reminder because we're just and living. I have to do that bad. sometimes when I'm overwhelmed with mm -hmm. life or work or whatever. Sometimes I have to remind myself of what I did achieve. Yes. Not what I did not mark off a list, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yep. So here's the third um, benefit of doing a vision board. Um, helps you get motivated. The, the vision board is a great place to, to get motivated as you work towards achieving your goals and your future vision. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that sometimes we need that extra motivation to mm -hmm. just get started to, to do something. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we, we can't just jump right into it or we don't feel like we have the energy or the time or, you know, whatever we need um, to, to do it. And so I think the vision board helps you, helps to motivate you, mm -hmm. uh, about what you, you know, might want to accomplish mm -hmm. whatever period of time. So, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And it shifts your mindset. Uh-huh. You know, it's, it's a great way to lift your mood and, uh, get into a positive mindset to reflect on your, um, uh, on your vision board. You think mm -hmm. about how each visual rep representation on that board makes you feel um, mm -hmm. and how important it is to, to you to achieve that in your future. So, you know, that, that a man think is, so is he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. You want me to do number five? Yes. Be intentional. I thought you were going to want to take this one because this this is like your trademark uh, phrase, uh -huh. be intentional. Um, becoming more intentional about your day can help you focus on a goal um, and set out clear steps of what you want to achieve. That vision board will help you to prioritize the most important goals and to be intentional. We talk about this all the time, uh -huh. about how important it is to... Um, to, to practice intentionality mm -hmm. in everything we do. Um, and sometimes it's, it's hard and, and we might forget. I know I do. I we forget. Do. Absolutely. But that's okay. Get back on track now. I mean, like, you know, I, I'm, I, like I said, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm, I'm exercising my three days. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas it, it used to be five, but you know, I'm getting my three in, I'm, I'm feeling good about that. So, yeah. um, and so we feel happy, right? When we can look at and we can actually see um, what we're achieving. So that's another thing. And then it helps us to connect areas of our lives. Um, it doesn't need to be limited to just work or your career goals. It can be about those personal things in your life. You know, uh, it can be about your fitness, your relationships, your health. And so that's another reason why I think I should do it, right? Because it could mm -hmm. be about every aspect of life. Um, it's just a useful visualization tool mm -hmm. that we use to help us stay on track in, in life and to improve our, our chances of succeeding in whatever it is that we're trying to do and definitely increases um, productivity, you know? Yeah. Um, when you are back to intentionality, when you are intentional about something, mm -hmm. really, seriously, I mean, if you're looking at that board every day and you're being intentional about, okay, I'm more, it's kind of like making a grocery list. Yeah. 
and you marking things off and you get to mark things off that list. I remember when I was doing my doctoral journey and mm -hmm. I was doing, when I was doing that classwork, ooh, that classwork used to just, I think I would rather write my dissertation and do that classwork, right? And I would yeah. just be able to mark that calendar and mark classes off. And the next thing I know, I had X's all over that doggone thing. I was done. Yes. It helps feel accomplished, feel like yeah. you've done something. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So yeah. let's start this year off with number one, not not overwhelming ourselves and setting things so broad and so big, right? That we cannot. I mean, yes. Be really um realistic. Yes. And you know, if it's fitness or whatever, and you haven't exercised in three years, then you ain't about to run a marathon, okay? Nope. Nope. Especially if you're my age, you ain't about to do it. So, I um, need. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so just say, hey, I'm gonna walk for ten minutes every day. Yeah. And after about two weeks, you'll start. You'll you'll start to see that you're walking for fifteen or twenty. Mm hmm And yep. then after about a month, you know, you'll be on it. So give yourself yeah. some time and some grace. Yep. Absolutely. We, we are done. We are. Gosh goes by that well, I, I know i know all right i'm gonna hold you to it on the vision board and yes, let's, i hope we said something to help you guys and i hope you guys have learned something about what you can expect in tennessee with these new laws and new bills that they passed uh i hope you've gotten your year off to a great start and what we hope most of all is that you will come back next saturday same chat channel same chat time right here on 94.7 FM, Dr. The Doctor in the chat room with Dr. Nicole and I. We will see you then.